Go for it. Friggin' what up, dude? Um, it's Trader Wilson, and I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Nice. History is Nice. Friggin' what up, dude? Welcome back to another ep of History is Dank, dude. I'm your host, Strider Wilson, dude. We got Aaron the Beast on the sticks, dude. What up, Aaron? What up? Freaking just chilling right now, dude. Feeling good, dude. Posted up, dude. We, we both saw Top Gun, bro. Oh, yeah. Let's just say, uh, hey, is Toppy Gun, is Top Gun an OBGYN doctor? Because it delivers... It delivers. Oh, is Top Gun a pregnant lady? Because uh, it delivers. Yeah. Is Top Gun a fucking Uber driver or an Uber Eats driver or Postmates, dude? Or a fucking Postman or a Paperboy? Because it delivers. Okay. Movie was sick as hell. It passed the Aaron test. Let's just say that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we all know Aaron, dude. We all know Aaron. You know, he's... You, you are a man of taste. Do you know what was a movie that made me aware that I had taste when I was a young kid? I saw that movie fucking... Um, the Ben Affleck and, and, Je- and Jennifer Lopez movie, like Gia or G? Geely. Geely. I was pretty young when I saw that. And up until that point, I was like, every movie is good. I was like, I go to the movies. I'm always entertained. These are sick. I saw Geely and I was like, I don't like this. (laughs) (laughs) I'm having a not good time. I mean, I I saw it on like DVD after it came out and I was like, it's not that bad. But like now with today's lens, I'm sure it's. It's really not good because there's one kid's playing special needs. Yeah, an actor. He's, yep. He does great, but you know what I meant to ask you is that won't fly. Does Walt in Breaking Bad is he actually a special need? Like he he's like a has a handicap. Is he? Yeah, is he he, he actually has a cerebral palsy. Yeah, nice. Was the kid in Glee? I think so. Okay, but I don't know. I mean, savage choice. I mean, I guess look, I love Friday Night Lights, but that actor. The quarterback, dude, I forget his name, that goes down. He does a good job of, of playing. It's not, he just plays a person who's a quadru- or a paraplegic after that. Injury. Well, yeah, if your character gets hurt during the, it's pretty hard to fake the pre-hurt part. Exactly, that one you get a pass. And that show gets a hard pass except for season two. Don't go see it. Season two, <laughs> trash during the writer strike. Yeah. Complete trash. Literally in season three, they just go, we're abandoning those storylines that never happened. <laughs> they literally, <laughs> they go old school Irish drinking problem on it. They're like, fucking never happened. Don't worry about it. I don't care what the priest did. I don't care. Fucking, I, look, I hurt. Okay. There's a lot of problems in my life, but never fucking happened. Bury, bury it deep fucking down. Just go to work and punch in. We're going to punch in. We're going to power through. That's how we're going we're gonna to power through. There was, a, school. There, there was a whole season of Dallas that was just a dream. No. <laughs> because they killed off Patrick Duffy's character, and he was like the heartthrob. <laughs> and then they just opened one season where the... Open the season or end the season where his wife finds him in the shower, and she's like, what? You're oh. alive? And like, yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, just taking a shower. Never happened. <laughs> I, did a sketch, I did a sketch comedy show with one of the, uh, the main guy's daughter in the movie. The blonde, like whoever the main oil guy is, his daughter. I yeah. never watched Dallas was from the 80s. And, oh, yeah, yeah. But she uh, did a show with her. Anyway, cool for me. Hey, cool story, Hansel <laughs> Strider. Shut up, dude. Just get to the fucking material, dude. <laughs> dude, d- podcast dudes aren't telling themselves to shut the fuck up enough on podcasts. Thank you. Hey, Strider, shut up, you dumbass. Let's keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Everyone needs that little Joe. We need two Joe Maurice's on our shoulders, mm-hmm. you know? A Joe Marisi who has a decaf, that's like the good one. And then a Joe Marisi who's, who needs his decaf on the other shoulder. And that's the devil one telling you, you know. Anyway, dude, today we're talking about, Aaron, have you ever heard of the Voynich Manuscript? No. Okay. Neither had I. I started researching. I've been really into Egypt lately, dude. And I was researching this one Egyptologist, like one of the original dudes, um, to crack 
like to decipher hieroglyphics or like really set the foundation of it that um, he later set up. I forget the French dude's name that went up and like really did it later on. But um, anyway, reading on it and he's like, oh, he took a shot at trying to crack the Voynich manuscript. And I was like, oh, what's that? That sounds freaking like something, you know, sounds like a book on tape that my mom would listen to in carpool or something. And it turns it out. sounds like the the fifth born movie. Dude, that's a great, it does really sound like that. It's a great call. And uh, it sounds like a a code that only freaking Nick Cage could crack, dude. Yeah. Right. But really they don't know, even to this day, what it is. There's a few facts about it. It's been carbon dated to medieval times, like the 15th century. And other than that, they really don't know shit about it. And there's a bunch of dudes and scholars and freelancers who uh, have taken cracks at cracking the Voynich code because what's mysterious about it, dude, and here we go. This is why people like it, dude. Here we go. You will see tons of illustrations. It's written in a language that is not a real language that's ever been spoken, but it does follow some rules. Like it passes this test called like Zipf's Law, Z-I-P-F-S, which is like a probability, probability assertion that like the frequencies of a of a certain events are inversely proportional to their rank. So it's like proposed by this American linguist, George Kingsley Zip, and basically like enough characters and letters in this Voynich manuscript show up where like it is based on language and in uh, probably a language that was spoken. Like m most things, uh, texts in the 15th century are in Latin because that was the aristocracy's language at the time or like the common tongue, mm -hmm. right? So basically this was, you can ascertain that because it was carbon dated to the 15th century and it was probably maybe a, a language that was spoken among commoners. Or if there's a theory about it that it was a book of alchemy, which honest, which alchemists would, you know, they'd have their own little followers and their own spiritual drawings and there's lots of weird drawings in this um, manuscript. But it's also, there's no real like alchemy on there. It's basically, they don't, they don't know. There's theories of what's in there and we'll get into it. But they're sure the Zodiac didn't write it. There's, dude, literally, bro, if you go on Reddit, they're like, it was the Zodiac guy. There's there's theories that this guy, Voynich himself, he's like, Voynich is a Polish dude who bought it in like the er, like the late, excuse me, the early um, 1900s and like 1910 at a book sale from like a Franciscan church or something like that. He bought it. He I, was a book, steal, book dealer. I thought that name sounded Polish. And so. Yes, it's Voynich. It's like the only Polish name I know. That and like Weszlowaja or whatever it is. That uh, dude... And then, like, Tomek, the dude that I get freaking dank-ass bagels from, dude. Tomek, dude, the guy's a beast, dude. We say Jindobre to do each other and freaking so sick, dude. Um, and we say freaking Jinkuye to each other, dude. And sick, dude. Yeah. Then I say later. And uh, so, basically, people are interested in this book because they're perverts. Here's how it's described in many articles online. You have naked women in pools of green liquid. Strange looking plants in a text are written in an unknown alphabet. They can all be found on delicate parchment papers of a mysterious manuscript from the 15th century and nobody knows what any of it means. What are these naked ladies doing swimming in green liquid? <laughs> I can probably find out. So you got, you got linguists who are pervs trying to figure it out, dude. Um, and so basically no one knows, is this a book on alchemy? Is it a book on medieval health and well-being? Is, uh, is it a manuscript? Is it a hoax? You know, is this some is it, dude's... Is it a grocery list a guy scribbled naked ladies on? Bro, it could be some dumb dude who just was bored in his, you know, Latin class and made up his own language. Could be like a, yeah, J.R.R. Tolkien, dude. He invented Elvish, right? So maybe it's a dude like that. I don't know. All I do know is that, ladies out there, if you're dating a dude and he's got a manuscript, uh, look out, dude. If he's got, if you're dating a dude and he cancels plans because he's got to go work on his manuscript, um, yeah. If you are dating a dude working on a manuscript, uh, look out. If you are handwriting a book, you might be a weird dude. 
Okay, if you spend time drinking freaking room temperature water and muttering to yourself about how change is coming, uh, then you might be a domestic terrorist. <laughs> yeah. If you think homemade explosives are a good way to wake people up, then you might be Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> anyway, dude, here we go. There's a recent interpretation of this Voynich manuscript, this Turkish dude and his family. He's got two sons. I love that. I was fired up on this. Dude, they're doing a family activity, dude. Beats dinger practice with my dad. Did I ever tell you about dinger practice, Aaron? Uh, no. Oh, dude, dinger practice, dude, me and my brothers, who all sucked at baseball. Actually, my brother Greg was pretty good at baseball, but hated baseball, was afraid of the ball, dude. And when my dad decided, um, this is OC dad intensity, dude, he decided, um, you know, we're going to go out, we're going to play catch. He liked baseball. All of us hated it. It was torture being out there. And at the end of practice, to wrap it up, you had to lean in to get on base, dude. <laughs> so you had to take dingers, dude. And he he invested, and we had a batting cage, dude. You know, we grew up in OC, dude. What up, dude? You know, I can order brunch. And uh, freaking, he would take the, it was like rubber balls, like those little orange balls, you know? And it wouldn't go full speed. And, like, he would put it to, like, all right, the average kid in your league would do this. And luckily, I was the younger. And he'd be like, all right, you got to lean into these pitches, dude. And fastballs would come, and you wouldn't lean in. He'd be like... Lean in. I don't want to pick these balls up. You have to just take one on the shoulder or the hip, dude. You know, we'd be wearing helmets, but it was like, bro, this is like, is this okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. And let me tell you what, coaches did like me. Because I was actually pretty good in the field, but I was terrified of the ball. But I'd get hit. I made all-stars, dude. Had a high on-base percentage, dude, in double A. Playing for the Rays, dude. Then I was able to quit, dude. I got I got tall, luckily, and I was like, dude, I want to go play basketball. I was like, all right. I would have been better at baseball, and I would have kept up with it had my dad or anybody, anybody in authority, anybody in a mentor sort of role, mm -hmm. just said to me, you're going to get hit with the ball. It's a fact. Yeah, you're going to get banned. You're going to get hit, but you're going you're gonna to survive. You're going to be fine. Because that's what got scary. As soon as you left, you'd go like T-ball then like soft toss, then you'd go like machine pitch, then kids pitching. And when kid, machine pitch, it's going to be accurate every time. Yeah. You're not going to get hit. But when kids are pitching, that's when you start getting hit by balls. Oh, yeah. I was never... And that's when dinger practice started. I never started. did anything other than kids pitching. Yeah. And and when you hit 12... Yes. And you could be in the league with 14-year-olds. Yep. They were bringing... Yeah, pony. When you were playing pony. They were bringing heat, and they had mustaches. Yeah, these kids got little mustaches. And I'm 12. They're, you know, look up there, they've got braces stained by fucking, you know, Code Red Mountain Dew. They're <laughs> hopped up on Code Red Mountain Dew. You know, their dad's making them be out there. It's a summer day. It's a disaster. Yeah. You know, that's why my mom would have to bribe me with 20 bucks and buy me Burger King nuggets. I'd show up with a glove in my bag and Burger King, dude. All the kids liked me. I'd buy more nuggets, dude, for this kid Randall on my team, dude. We'd sit there. I, this is this is when I started giving up, dude. I was like, I just want to play right field, and I just house nuggets from Burger King, which had the dankest sauce, and just you know, then go get a hot dog, dude. I mean, it's it, it's a miracle I didn't get diabetes out there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, dude, enough about my horrendous baseball career, dude. Um, so the text, one theory is from these Turkish dudes, is that it's written in something called phonetic ornithography, which is you should not use as a safe word during sex because you probably can't say it. Yeah. Um, but funny enough, it's phonetic. So it means the author probably wrote the words just as he heard them. So he probably didn't, wasn't quite literate, maybe not trained in Latin and maybe had some sort of training. Um, so he was writing them down. Like if I like, yeah, just literally hearing the word phonetically, like that's like the thing in the parenthetical next to the dictionary where like you, you know. You look at you hear a word like you cannot you cannot read those and know how it's pronounced though. No, I don't it, know what any of that means. Correct, and that's the problem here. You got dudes who have deciphered hieroglyphics in Egypt, and there's a lot more evidence that they can you know check stuff with. This is just one book of this only language, so you're kind of swimming in open waters with dude, it, right? You know, you know what they need? James Spader from Stargate, dude. Bro, or they just need freaking. You know who else they need? They just need. Fucking John McClane. <laughs> <laughs> no, but wait, what did Spader do in Star Trek? Stargate. Star oh, yeah, yeah. 100% they need Spader from Stargate, yeah. who goes and falls in love with the hot lady from the New World. Let's go, dude. 
fired up on that. New world or old world. We yeah, don't really know. exactly. But he translates that language even though no one uses it. Mm-hmm. He's a freaking beast, and he finds the other letter. Mm-hmm. And then you got the weird god who has who has uh, is weirdly a pedophile in that. Strange, strange stuff going on yeah, in Stargate. You know. Yeah. And you've got Kurt, Kurt Russell, who's a beast, being a total badass dude. The, the colonel, the straightest flat top you've ever seen. Yeah, dude. Do you think that guy likes change? Guy's allergic to change. This kid did go down though, dude. Yeah, this kid found his gun. Yeah, it's yeah. not good, dude. He's racked with guilt. And you know exactly. And he's a colonel. He shouldn't have better gun um, practices than that. Um, anyway, dude. This Voynich manuscript, it's written in something described as a mysterious, illustrated in a handwritten vellum codex, dude. Produced in what was thought to have been written, a visual code, dude, a code to what, bro? Okay, this question, this book raises more questions than it answers, dude, which is basically every book for me, dude. Um, I mentioned it's been carbon dated to the Renaissance area, era, Northern Italy, so they, they date it, that it came from northern italy so probably some italian dude people thought da vinci wrote this in some sort of code they thought this dude bacon who was like a um smart ass dude um who also has a delicious ass name uh <laughs> as being the author but really they're like we don't know who the author is we don't know the language and we honestly don't know what the hell these naked ladies are doing in pools and all these type of things right so um, it's funny it, it it could be the scribblings of a madman 100 percent but because it's old, it's worth something. <laughs> exactly. It's in, a, it's in a library in Yale. If you want to check it out, you can go to the Yale Library website. I looked at a few pictures on there. And a lot of the pictures, you know, maybe it's good to give a, a little sort of a, a word portrait here of like, there's like a spinning wheel that looks like a calendar, but like it doesn't match up to the proper amount of months. Um, there's women floating in these pools and then on things that like look like ovaries. And so they think that like, then there's plants, but... They look, they're drawn like make believe fictional plants that we've never seen. Maybe they've gone extinct. That's where people are like, oh, it's aliens. It's an alien manuscript that someone was abducted and he saw these plants and came back and shared the knowledge to the medieval people. It's a, um, and you know, this is really, you can do the rabbit hole goes real, real deep on that. We won't get it. So basically, I can open up the doors to you here if you want to go into it, but you don't have to. But this dude, Gerard Cheshire, dude, sort of moving off the, uh, the um the Turkish dude basically the Turkish dude and his family are are they used they used the Turkish language and the old Turkish language um to sort of decipher three hundred words in it and they've done some characters they said they've they've solved the calendar on there and you can watch this YouTube video on it but it's still you're kind of like then experts will check it and they're like no basically people want to claim that they've cracked the code a lot of people's but. You know, it seems like what these dudes are doing, it seems pretty legit, and they are linguists. But this guy's an amateur. He is an electrical engineer, so he is a smart-ass dude. But, um, you know, then the, the the experts go in there, and they're like, no, not really. Some of this doesn't all hold, hold sway. Um, but then this other dude who's another expert, Dr. Gerard Cheshire, dude, he's like, he just says broad statement. He's like, look, it's no exaggeration to say this work represents one of the most important developments in freaking date and romance and romance linguistics. Oh, Aaron's got some beast ass pictures. Yeah. That's There's a, the ladies. The naked ladies. There's a naked lady swimming in green water and just, and you're like, okay, what's going on here, dude? This is a guy who went to a cello wrestling. Dude, exactly. This could be a dude who went to a frat party back in the 15th century and was like, this was tight. And he's describing it. And maybe these are just ladies names where he's like, I don't know what a lady's name is. He's like, Catherine wrestled, you know, Freaking another lady's name from that era, dude. <laughs> and then it was legit. She got pinned. It was tight. We all drank some some absinthe. Maybe that's absinthe, dude. And he's like, I trip out when I drink absinthe. This is what I see. You know? The writing is really fun to look at. Super fun. Like, and it are, does read left eye. to right. Uh, also, Aaron, it's interesting that you say that. So according to this Turkish linguist, he's like, there's a... Um, a sign for rope like there's like measurements in there and stuff we'll get into the sections in a second of the uh of the book but uh of the manuscript um but they're like this is the character and letter for rope and then the author actually extends that character beyond that and so it gets like artistic with it and like shows that it's a unit of measurement so he because they would take use rope to measure things and of course that's all theoretical but it looks pretty they say they say there's been poems in here there's been 
you know, medicinal stuff. So maybe let's get into the sections a little bit. Let's abandon this guy's quote because there's a lot, not even there's that a lot of Google images, folks, uh, for you to for you to check out. I mean, it's yeah, you can go for sure and check out a lot of fun fun ones. Uh, basically, proto romance language lost from record until now is what they what this is this Doctor Cheshire is saying. Um, so the one article says it's divided. So this is what we do know from the 15th century. We do know there's naked ladies bathing in green water. Honestly, green I'd water. rather have blue water because it so- sounds like the green water is probably needs to get changed out unless maybe you know who knows there's algae or something and that's good for the skin there's more more naked ladies yeah a lot of naked ladies in this book dude, which is probably the only reason it's got attention dude <laughs> um so there's this expert dude michelle lapointe dude or excuse me michael lapointe dude explains um that the books begins with an herbal section featuring vibrant drawings of plants but nobody's quite sure where they came from mention that then there's an astrological section which includes fold-out drawings of celestial charts. I mentioned these, these calendars that do not seem to match up with any known calendar. An astrological wheel, and they're dotted with little drawings of nude women. So there's nude women in the space section of this too. So that's legit. Honestly, I think I did open mics with the guy who drew this, all, all this stuff. 100%. <laughs> I sat next to a kid named Cody one time in middle school doing my Spanish class, and he drew a lot of stuff like this. In a subsequent, subsequent Bellinol... Balianological section, dude. Not another good safe word for boning. Um, the new drawings go wild. Here we go. Illustrations depict, depict naked women breathing in green liquid. Naked women propelling, propelled by jets of water. Naked women supporting rainbows with their hands. Some scholars believe that one illustration shows a naked woman hanging out on a pair of ovaries. So maybe this is sort of like a reproductive thing. Or they said... You know, according to these Turkish dudes, they decipher stuff that there's a common misconception that if you want to have a male child in the in the middle in the medieval era, that um, or excuse me, in this like Renaissance 15th century um, era, that uh, if you ate more food, it would lead to a, a guy being born. Like that's not true. Um, <laughs> so they say the book's broken down into four sections, but here's how little we know about it. Then I pull up another article and it goes, there are six sections of the manuscript, botanical, astrological, medical, biological, cosmological, pharmaceutical, and stars. So, I mean, I don't know about that. I could see how this could get forwarded it. Like astrological and stars. I mean, what? That sounds like the same shit, dude. Uh, there's roughly 240 pages. Um, there's some that, pages that are missing um and that's basically the only facts about it dude is you got naked ladies posting up in pools dude i I found another image so this book sounds sick as hell okay aaron (laughs) this is absolutely fantastic image what we're looking at right here dude i think we've um this is something that we've seen previously of the butterflies influencing the garden goddess here i believe this might be called garden goddess or garden nymph dank ass boris vallejo here um, legit looks like copper wiring um, used to cover the body and there's no question this looks like some sort of orange theory fitness instructor perhaps perhaps even crossfit fitness instructor and this is something that there's no question um, you would add a seventh section to the Voynich manuscript which would be a drill factory section yeah. no question Aaron really appreciate the hell out of you bringing that up right um, I'll, sharing that I'll with the audience for no good reason Michael Stoltenberg. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, if you told me this dude was a, a dude who uh, was deciphering the book, 100%, I believe that. <laughs> or the dude that bought it. Like, this guy he could play Voynich, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Polish dude who who um, is the namesake of the book, who just is the one who just bought it most recently in the 1900s, and now Yale is the one who owns it. Michael Stolek, dude, let's go, bro. Hilarious, dude. Good actor, dude. Great. Yeah. Can play a good weasel. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, I mean, look, Aaron, let's posit our own theories here before we bone out. Maybe we'll take a few cues, you know what I'm saying, before we bone out. But I think we got to posit a few theories here. Um, if I'm going to guess, I mean, there's a lot of manuscripts of alchemy out there. It's probably just another one of those that's just more. First things first. Undeci- indecipherable. A number one, it's written by a dude. That's what they say. There's Hey, on Reddit, this is actually a point of contention because they're saying there's a lot of stuff on women's health in there. And they're like, well, why not reference a woman? And it's like, well, 
back in that day, literacy was probably kept to like what the the clergy, and yeah. then there was probably some some aristocracy women that were um, literate, but mainly it was like it was men. So it, yeah. odds are it was written by a dude. Yeah. Also, he's obsessed with drawing naked he's ladies drawing in a naked pool. Ladies. Yeah, it's not. So come on. This dude was freaking probably popping wood, dude, and, you know, popping wood and freaking painting on parchment, baby. Yeah, 100% written by a dude. Probably a dude. Didn't get out much. Yep. Rural. Just looking at plants. Just posted up. Dreaming There's a lot of dudes like that. Dreaming in about ladies. Yeah. Very This guy would be normal. on Reddit nowadays. This guy would definitely be a keyboard warrior dude yeah he'd have a name that he doesn't go by by on the internet dude, you know and then he'd get really mad online but then also when you know he's working his i imagine him being like the night manager at like a uh, ralph's you know imagine him being like robin williams in one hour photo <laughs> um <clears throat> So your theory is that it's written by a horny dude. Guess what? Yeah. That's my theory as well. That's really checking up. A horny dude who's maybe into alchemy. Alchemy is this sort of, you know, Arabic derived, it's old name from Egypt, chemia meaning black earth. We did this in our, um, you know, e Egyptians wouldn't call themselves Egyptians. They were the chemia people, black earth, the, the, the black soil of the Nile. Um, maybe it's, it's just a primitive form of chemistry that was practiced by, you know, people that didn't have access to the, the knowledge it? and stuff we do have now. Is, it, is alchemy about s trying to turn everything into gold? Sort of. That's basically it. But it's also other things. It's basically a belief that all matter could be transformed. And then people would try to, of course, transform it to gold, the most, the most um, valuable material, right? But you could transform all matter is alchemy. Um, and it, this, it's, what's interesting about it is it takes place independently and across the globe. Like it shows up in China, India, the Middle East, in Europe alike. And, and it's also the, a philosophy too. Also, there's a sick ass book called The Alchemist that you should read. It's got some good ass, you know, philosophical takes on life. Um, so anyway, pretty sick, dude. I always like a nice mystery, dude. It's a good, sure. good point of conversation. I like, you know, it sounds like. You know, the Voynich manuscript is something that Tom Hanks in the Da Vinci Code would reference and, you know, take something out of. And it also sounds like something that my boy Nick Cage could go around. My theory is that, you know, it's it's a dude from the middle, middle. you know, maybe if, if Nick Cage did a 23 and Me, he would be, his ancestor would be the author of this book. Yeah, he's, wearing, just, he's wearing a wizard hat. Exactly. That, that folds on the top. Definitely folds over. And then instead of a robe is just wearing uh, the wife beater from Cameron Poe, mm. and then his pants are just no pants because he's probably popping a boner too much and just is living in a secluded, you know, section of a castle somewhere and is just writing this book in a language that he made up, talking to himself. Right. So if you take this plant that no one's ever seen that kind of looks like lilies from the pond that's outside... And I put naked ladies on there, none of which will talk to me because I walk around fully torqued boner and <laughs> and I'm wearing a wife beater and mutter to myself a lot. Uh, and so I'm just going to draw them and speak a language to my, all unto myself. And I like to look at the stars. And, you know, coffee, he was probably housing coffee. Look, the Capetian monks, this is northern Italy. Maybe he was drinking some good coffee, coffee in the Middle East. Maybe he traveled around before he started to decided to go no pants style, full on commando style, wizard style, and uh, that's where he gained his knowledge of linguistics and stuff. He had to have had an uh, an upbringing of wealth, you know, because he's posting up in this castle, and his dad's like, "Look, I don't want to, you know, I don't. I already have other male heirs, but just in case, we'll keep this dude in his book in a tower and just, you know." He'll just post up out there. Yeah. Or That's phenomenon style, he has a brain tumor. Yeah. And he's just scribbling, thinking he's writing the great American novel. Yep. The great Italian novel. Mm-hmm. And uh, illustrating it as well. Mm -hmm. at, some, at a certain point, he's like, ah, oh, I, should, I should draw on this. 
and um, yeah, it's all gibberish. Hundred percent. I mean, I think we just cracked it. Everyone else can save their time. I mean, am I right? Either that, or it explains the Diotlov Pass incident. Uh, one of the two. people are saying that's explained now, Aaron. <laughs> Did you know that? Uh, I mean, of course, they all. They're like, oh, science has cracked the code. All right. <clears throat> Someone just asked me what's the earliest memory I have. Mm-hmm. Schreier, what up? What's the earliest memory you have? Probably of seeing my father. You know when little kids see their dad's dong when they're young? Yep. And they go, whoa, that's big. Can't I remember seeing it. my dad's dong and being like, whoa. Yep. You must be my father because we're the same. <laughs> I remember that. It was, so way it was before dinger practice. I was a toddler, maybe barely able to crawl. I think I threw, I threw down the Thomas the Engine book. You know, I think I can. I think I can. And I was like, I think I can go see my dad's dong right now because I hear, sure they hit the shower running. Saw it. What about you, Aaron? What's your earliest memory? I have memories. I have memories of playing like at my being at my sister's first communion party mm. in a at a rec center in Chicago just around the corner from our house and playing at the billiard table just throwing the ball just throwing the balls around so they'd go in the holes whoa uh while Billy Joel's uh for the longest time plays whoa I, Mm-hmm. For the longest time. I think that's my earliest memory. And I was pr- I had to have been three. You had to, because that's 80s doo-wop, Joel. And yeah. 80s doo-wop, Joel sucks. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> we all go through phases in life. He went through one uh, pretty hard there. Uh, got him. Hey, he's got, got him Christy Brinkley, songs. so it didn't. Yeah, he did. <laughs> it yeah. worked out pretty well. Got him a few DUIs, too. Well, that was later. That was once True. Brinkley left. Dude, I got so many boys who got DUIs on in, on stuff that isn't cars, dude. I got so many boys that got DUIs on skateboards, got DUIs on jet skis, DUIs just boating, oh, DUIs on boats? scooters. I mean, boats is where you should get them. You know, boats is gnarly. You got to get down. You got to get boats on DUIs, dude. Yeah. You see people going so fast on those things, people will get rocked on boats, dude. Oh, yeah. All right, let's just do one more. Mm, let's see here. Uh, Strider, what up, dude? What's the problem with my boy Chris? My boy Chris, whenever we get our buzz on, thinks it's time to crack open some cigars, dude. No one likes smoking cigars. They aren't cool. It's always the ones that are cheap from the liquor store and they smell bad. Why does he like smoking them? And if he does, that's chill. Just go do it on your own. Just quit trying to get the group to do it. How do we tell our boy Chris to stop making us try to smoke cigars when we get our buzz on late? So he's talking like Swisher Sweets. Exactly. I had a boy like one yeah. of my bros. I think, I think there's just one of those guys in every crew. I think you're right. When I when my buddy Ferraro got married, one of his bros was like, dude, let's go smoke cigars. I was like, why with me if I ever expressed interest <laughs> in cigars? Also, we're supposed to be at pictures right now, and we were late, and the bride was like, what the hell's wrong with you guys? And we're like, and I had to be like, my bad and like take one for the team. I couldn't snag them. I was like, my bad, we both wanted to have cigars to celebrate you guys. And they were like, that's nice, but shut up. So I think Aaron's right, dude. It's inevitable, dude. You know, <clears throat> love people for their imperfections and maybe just drop some health stats on them and remind them, like, be like, hey, dude, that doesn't look cool and also smells bad and we're all just going to watch The Matrix right now. So maybe don't do that and especially don't do it inside. So, just remind me of that. If you bought it at a liquor store, what do you think it's made of? Yeah, dude. Old freaking old scratcher tickets. Yeah, that's what you're smoking, dude. You're smoking old scratchers. That stuff when you do a scratcher ticket it comes off. That's what they're packing that cigar with, dude. Yeah. Sick. So, but Aaron's right. There's just always one of those dudes in the crew. You know what I mean? And it's just that's just life, bro. That's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes, dude. And hopefully he'll get a GF, dude, because GFs, no one wants to kiss someone who's smoking a cigar. No. You know what I mean? Like, think about the wives of ladies, like a 50-year-old dude who's on vacation, and he's like, you know, 
he's housing mojitos in like Miami and he's got that barrel chest in that, you know, that cocktail glow and buttons of his Tommy Bahama shirt are coming undone. You know, the more sips of that mojito he takes then he craps up, cracks open a cigar and it's like, and he's going to want to kiss his wife or his mistress or whoever the hell he's with. Yikes. Yeah. No, thanks. I don't know why I thought of that, but. Just show him that guy and go, this is your future if you don't fucking straight. Yeah, you're going to be a cigar, dude. You want to be a cigar guy? You want to be a fucking cigar guy? Fun for a hot second. Cool to kind of look at. But like, huh? Nah, dude. You know what would be a cool way to enjoy a cigar? Stick it up your butt. <laughs> Because your butt can experience flavors and get a buzz as well. And, you know, there's a time and a place. You go to Havana, you want to have a nice cigar. I get it. But, you know, try everything once, but don't make it your thing. Dude. All right. I'm fired up, dude. The Voynich Manuscript. Go down the rabbit hole, but beware. Um, but although you don't need to because Aaron and I answered it, it was a horny dude who talks like Nick Cage in a tower that wrote it in the 15th century in Italy. So that's all you need to know. Other than that, freaking stay stoked. Check out the Patreon. Aaron's a legend as always, dude. Strider Wilson Treads at gmail.com. Send me your freaking comment, comments, questions, suggestions, and shout outs. I still want some more shout outs, dude. Who are you fired up on? Let's give them some shout outs. And um, check out the Patreon. Weights and dates coming again. And uh, hell yeah, dude. Stay stoked. Let